All right, welcome to Talk and Investing. I'm Tom, and as always, this is not financial advice. Today, I want to talk about Bitcoin and the Bitcoin miners. Bitcoin had a historic week. It did something this week it's never done before. It did something this month it's never done before. So I want to go through that. We're going to go through all of our normal weekly and monthly charts, but I want to go through a bunch of additional stuff and talk about exactly what's going on with Bitcoin. So before I get going, I want to thank everybody. We finally did reach 20,000 subscribers, so thank you very very much. We are a small channel, but growing. So if you're new here and you're interested in Bitcoin and the Bitcoin miners, please consider subscribing to the channel. And also we're going for 700 likes on this video. So please smash the like button. It's been helping out the videos a lot. It's been helping out the channel a lot. So thanks again to everybody. Let's get into Bitcoin. Okay. I want to start out with this article before I get to our normal charts. This article came out on Thursday. Bitcoin is hitting all time highs around the world. So as I make this video Sunday night, Bitcoin is about 7% off of its all time high when measured against the US dollar. However, the US dollar has outperformed a lot of other currencies around the world. So you're gonna see there's over 30 countries where Bitcoin has already hit its all time high. So I'm just gonna read this real quick. The US dollar index, the DXY, we talk about the DXY all the time on this channel. The US dollar index is 10.7% ahead since November of 2021. That is the last time Bitcoin hit its all time high at $69,000, meaning many currencies across the world have lost value. Among the countries where Bitcoin has hit new highs in local terms are economic powerhouses like China, Japan, the UK and India. So these are some of the largest countries in the world. These are some of the largest economies in the world. So in a lot of places, Bitcoin is already at its all time high. This goes on to say, as well as developing markets like Argentina, Turkey, and Egypt. So in total, there are now 30 plus countries where Bitcoin is already at its all time high. But of course, historically, the world measures this against the US dollar and $69,000 was its all time high as measured in US dollars. So we did Sunday night hit 64,000 300 right on the nose and then we had a pullback from there so as you're watching this video i'm not sure where bitcoin is but we are making a run at all-time highs prior to the halving which is something that bitcoin has never done in its history already at this point even if this is the top between now and the halving this is much further, much closer than Bitcoin has ever been to its all-time high. Typically, it takes several months after the halving to reach the previous all-time highs. So we are, it would seem, ahead in this cycle. Okay, so how did we get here? How did we get so close to all-time highs? I want to take a look at two things that Bitcoin did over the last few days. This is Bitcoin on the one-week chart. So I've drawn this gold line here over the weekly candle that just closed Sunday night. Last week, Bitcoin was up over $11,000 on the week. That is the largest one week candle in the history of Bitcoin. Okay, so in addition to having the largest one week candle in the history of Bitcoin, if we take a look at the last month here on the Bitcoin one day chart, you'll see I've drawn a gold line again. Bitcoin was up $18,606 or just under 44% in the month of February. And essentially I've drawn a box here from February 1st to February 29th. So you'll see February 29th itself was a red day. We finished about $2,500 off of the high for the month, but even with with that pullback, this was the largest one month candle in the history of Bitcoin. You have to go all the way back to October of 2021. There was a $17,000 candle in October. So with that said, I want to talk about one of the main drivers as to why this is happening. And I want to take a look at the Bitcoin spot ETFs. This week in particular really showed the power of the spot ETFs. If you take a look at Bitcoin on the one day time frame, you'll see this green candle was Monday, this green candle was Tuesday, and this green candle was Wednesday. So we had three gigantic green candles. In fact, the rest of the week was basically sideways. This weekly candle, which was the largest one in history, was really all done in three days time. So if we take a look at the Bitcoin spot ETFs inflows, I cut this down just so that you could see just this week. So if you see, $519 million on Monday, $576 million on Tuesday, and $673 million on Wednesday. So those three gigantic inflows led to three gigantic green candles for Bitcoin. Then you'll see on Thursday, this pulled back to only $92 million. And on Friday, it actually went red. We had a rare outflow day. It was very strong, in my opinion, for Bitcoin to perform on Thursday and Friday, basically going sideways, when in fact, we did have an outflow. Now, the reason for this outflow, if you take a look at Grayscale, all of a sudden their numbers popped up dramatically on Thursday and Friday, almost $600 million of outflow on Thursday. 
and then almost $500 million of outflow on Friday. This is in all likelihood due to Genesis starting to sell or continuing to sell its Bitcoin. Genesis had $1.6 million invested in the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which is now the Grayscale Bitcoin ETF. So they got court approval on February 14th to begin to sell that off. So I think you can see as these numbers have some anomalies, the, as the outflows on the Grayscale Trust have some big days, I think we're getting pretty close to the end of this. Even with all that said, Bitcoin had its biggest week in history. With that said, let's take a look at what the Bitcoin miners did this week, because while Bitcoin was breaking records, the Bitcoin miners were not. Okay, so if we take a look at week over week, you'll see Bitcoin was up 23%. That beat every single Bitcoin miner. So about two thirds of these Bitcoin miners were up anywhere from 4% to down 5%. So very little moves on a week where Bitcoin had its best week in history. So this was a disappointment in particular. If you remember, we had a big green candle on Wednesday. On Wednesday, almost every single Bitcoin miner was red. So that was actually a very difficult day as an investor. So, so I just tried to point that out. We did jump on on Wednesday and do an emergency live stream to talk about it. That was a very, very frustrating day. And in fact, on Thursday, the following day, we had another gigantic red day. So I did take a screenshot of the big board of Bitcoin miners on Thursday. So you'll see from top to bottom, this is red. MicroStrategy, which is not a Bitcoin miner, but we include it on the list, is the only green thing on this whole list. That followed along with Bitcoin. It was up big on the day. At the same time, Marathon was down over 16%, Riot almost 10%, CleanSpark 7.5%. So a red day across the board on Wednesday when Bitcoin had one of its best days ever, and then again on Thursday. So these were two very difficult days. I know a lot of you guys were probably very frustrated. Obviously, I was as well. That's why we did several extra live streams last week. So this is taking a look at Friday. If you see, Friday at least we did have a rebound. Friday, we were basically green across the board. Core Scientific was down 0.27%, but you're going to see that was just a little bit of a correction from the fact that Core Scientific was the number one performer Bitcoin miner for the week. So basically all those other days where the Bitcoin miners were deeply red, Core Scientific was overperforming. We'll have to see where we go from here, but the Bitcoin miners have an awful lot of catching up to do versus Bitcoin. Okay, so you'll see, like we talked about, Core Scientific was up 19%. That still was not as much as Bitcoin, but it was the leader on the week. Hut was up 14%. Marathon, which is the largest by market cap of all the Bitcoin miners, was up 13%. Argo Blockchain is one of the micro cap miners. It was up 10%. CleanSpark up 9%. And then from there, again, a lot of dramatic underperformers. Riot, which is fluctuating between the second or third largest Bitcoin miner by market cap, it was actually down 3%. Bitfarms was down 3%. Iris Energy was down 3%. These are three of the more popular stocks among retail investors. So this was a very difficult week for the Bitcoin miners. If we zoom out a little bit and look year to date, you're going to see the same thing is happening. Other than a few outliers, the Bitcoin miners are dramatically lagging behind Bitcoin so far year to date through Friday, March 1st, Bitcoin was already up 50% this year. That's following the year 2023, where Bitcoin was up over 150% on the year. So we are well into the bull market, but the Bitcoin miners have not given us that leveraged reward as of late. A few Bitcoin miners do stand out. CleanSpark is up 62% year to date. They are the only Bitcoin miner that's outperforming Bitcoin. Marathon's up 15%. So like I said, they are the largest Bitcoin miner by market cap. And then BitFarms is up 1%. Those are the only ones in the green year to date. So obviously what we're looking to see is over the next couple of months, can the Bitcoin miners start to do their thing? We did run into this last year as well. In a year where the Bitcoin miners all ended up very green, we had a 14 week period in 2023 where the Bitcoin miners dramatically lagged Bitcoin. By the end of the year, the vast majority of Bitcoin miners were a two or three or four X leverage to the upside on Bitcoin. So things did sort themselves out by the end of the year, but we're having another one of those timeframes right now. If we just take a look at this chart, this goes just a few days back prior to the end of the year. You're going to see we're nine and a half weeks into basically the Bitcoin miners being upside down. While Bitcoin in this period of time is up 45%, only CleanSpark is in the green just behind it. All the other Bitcoin miners are in the red. 
And a lot of these are down 40 or 50%. Mawson's down over 60%. So I will at this point point out the fact that I have been saying for over a year now, I do believe that there will be winners and losers in this space. In previous bull markets, basically all the Bitcoin miners were to the moon. I don't believe that's gonna be the case in this cycle. There is significantly more competition in this space than there was in any of the previous bull markets. Right here on this channel, we follow 19 publicly traded Bitcoin mining companies. Um, the majority of these companies have announced massive, massive growth plans. So I do think it's going to be very important to pick the right stocks, to pick the winners. This is not just going to be all Bitcoin miners to the moon, in my opinion. And so far, you'll see the Bitcoin miners are dramatically lagging Bitcoin. So I do remain bullish on the Bitcoin miners, but I have to point out, this is not financial advice. And so far, the Bitcoin miners have been underperforming. All right, this is a new chart this year. I've taken the top two cryptocurrencies, the top two commodities, which are gold and silver, and the four US indexes, which are the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, and the Russell 2000. And we're tracking these and comparing them on a weekly basis and on a year-to-date basis. So you're gonna see this week, Bitcoin and Ethereum absolutely exploded. Bitcoin up over 23%, Ethereum up just under 17%. And again, this is as of Friday, March 1st. This does not include the weekend. But you're gonna see the Russell 2000 finally had a big week up almost 3%. It had been lagging all year and it's actually been lagging the other indexes for almost three years now. Pretty much everything was in the green. The Dow was down 0.1%. But if we take a look at year to date, this is where things get very interesting. You're gonna see Ethereum and Bitcoin in a virtual tie. Ethereum's up 49.97% as of the end of trading on Friday. Bitcoin was up 49.92%, just five one hundredths of a percent behind Ethereum. Almost a complete tie here. So once again, the cryptocurrencies are dramatically outperforming all other assets. However, it's worth noting, the Nasdaq up 8.4% year to date. The S&P is up 7.7% year to date. These are dramatic increases in just two months. And both of these are at their all time highs. They are in a breakout. The market has been off to the races, particularly the NASDAQ and the S&P. You're gonna see the Dow's up 3.7%, which is a nice start to the year. The Russell 2.43%, that's up less year to date than it is week to date. So you can see going into this week, it was actually still in the red. Gold at 1%, silver's down a little. So it has actually been years where gold and silver continue to just go sideways in a very small trading range. And I do believe that a lot of money in particular is coming out of gold into Bitcoin over time. Now, gold still dwarfs Bitcoin. Gold is somewhere on the magnitude of 12 or 13 times the market cap that Bitcoin is, but Bitcoin is now over a trillion dollars. And I do think that gap will continue to narrow. The, the Bitcoin spot ETFs, are drastically outperforming what the gold ETFs did when they came into existence not that long ago. So I do think you're gonna see that trend continue. So some of the things to keep our eye on, I think that I will at least be keeping my eye on for this week. What are the inflows and outflows of the spot ETFs? Does Grayscale start to slow down a little bit again? Or does Gemini continue to put pressure on the outflow there? And then obviously we're gonna have to see how Bitcoin reacts this week, having coming off of its largest one week gain in history. Does the momentum continue? From a technical analysis, we are overbought in a lot of ways. However, momentum sometimes rules the day and the trend has absolutely been upwards for Bitcoin and the entire cryptocurrency world. So we will see at some point, I just would remind everybody, it is very, very common to have 20 or 30% pullbacks in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. We may continue to run up. I, I am very bullish personally on Bitcoin for the rest of the year 2024 and the year 2025. But having said that, I do expect that there will be some business as usual, which is massive volatility. So I am always ready for a 20 or 30% pullback. And I think if you're, if you're investing in Bitcoin and you're investing in the Bitcoin miners, that's something to keep on the top of your mind. We suffered some massive volatility with the Bitcoin miners. So I don't know if that's over. Everybody, please be careful. If you're considering investing or you are invested in the Bitcoin miners, always please remember massive volatility comes along with that. I also just want to finish this out by thanking everybody again for getting us to 20,000 subscribers. We've been doing this for over three years, well over a thousand videos. So it's been a long journey. A lot of you have taken this journey with us. So if you've been with us all along, thanks so much. And if you're brand new, please consider subscribing, of course. And if everybody could please smash the like button. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.